Um, this decision to drop the SAT or ACT shows how schools are adapting to a new reality. And the new reality is that some schools may not be able to field a freshman class and survive this disruption, even with billions of dollars in government aid. What kinds of schools are most vulnerable? Most vulnerable, I think, are the vast majority in the middle of that distribution curve. So the schools that have $40 billion endowments, they're going to be just fine in the long run. They're going to be able to continue offering these, you know, wonderful residential experiences and have wonderful amenities and do all that great stuff. Um, and then on the total other end of, of the delivery system, there are a couple of schools that have already mastered online education. And they've spent years doing this. They're at the top of their game. Um, those are might be the ones that are left standing uh, when this is all said and done. And then in the middle, you have all these schools that were already in a precarious financial situation before this virus hit. And so whether they're going to make it in the long run, I don't know that all of them are going to make it. I think some of them um, are going to be victims as well of the virus. OK, so that leads to my question. Next question. What does coronavirus mean for tuition, which has only been rising and has hit ridiculous numbers? No one knows if international students, especially those from China, will be able to get student visas in time and will come back to campus. Those are the students whose tuition subsidizes uh, the domestic students, a lot of the students who can't pay the full sticker price. And for those families who can afford to pay the asking price, who wants to pay full tuition when you see that students can learn through remote learning and online instead of going to classes in person? I think there's a segment of people, especially the ones who are attracted to the highly selective colleges, that view college as more than just the education. They want a certain experience. They want this coming of age experience in college, and they want to be meeting people outside the classroom. It's in sports and activities and, and over dinner. Um, for most people, that's a huge luxury anyway. Um, and in fact, um, once these classes are now all online, who knows how quickly they're going to be able to come offline again. And for students that are stuck, so so to speak, in the on, online world who don't want to be there, are they going to be willing to pay those sticker prices, those high tuitions anymore? Unclear, unclear, because I think for a lot of them, they're not really getting the full package of what they were expecting uh, for college, for that college experience. So, and another uh, aspect of this is that we learned that uh, some colleges are actually uh, loosening their admission standards, or at least uh, dropping the standardized uh, test portion of some of those admission standards, Tufts University being one, one of them. Uh, we know that this has been a trend for a while, that a lot of universities have tried to sort of wiggle out of uh, using these uh, standardized tests as a marker for admission. Do you think that the current pandemic that we're in could sort of be uh, the thing that sort of accelerates this trend and maybe uh, forces a lot of colleges to rethink uh, how, they, uh, how they vet students and accept them? Absolutely. That was, as you point out, that was a trend that was already in process before the virus hit. And now getting all these tests online in a secure way is going to be very, very hard. And it's not clear to me how quickly that's going to be, that's going to happen. So if you want to be able to trust those scores, you have to be confident that there was enough security in place for all these at-home test takers. And that's, that's tricky. So it's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, and I would, though, say that I, I don't view test optional as wiggling out or lowering standards. Um, those tests have been under criticism for a long, long time. Um, and if anything, speaking as a former admissions officer, it really just shifts the burden onto other parts of the application, um, whereas you used to have the test as an extra factor. So I don't know that they're necessarily loosening the standards, but there's a whole group of students for whom test optional is going to be a huge relief. Um, so yes, we expect to see more and more colleges going test optional. And, and maybe they'll come back. For example, Boston University says, oh, they're doing a pilot. They're only going to uh, be test optional for a few years. Who knows? I think anything's possible. And I think once they see what kinds of classes they're able to put together in a test optional world, they might never make it a requirement again. And of course, this has lots of implications for the uh, the testing sub economy as well. All those companies that uh, dole out uh, tutoring advice for kids who are, uh, need tutoring for the SAT. Anna, how are you advising your clients? Uh, for high school seniors who have already heard from schools, will it be easier to get off the wait list? For high school juniors who are supposed to be uh, in the thick of their, their academic careers trying to get the best scores they can, what does this mean for how they prepare for the college admissions process? 
Yeah, so for the people who are planning to start college this fall, absolutely, I expect there to be a lot of movement this summer on the wait lists. <laughs> Uh, because right now for enrollment managers at these colleges, they're living a nightmare scenario. They have no idea who's showing up this fall. Um, and so, you know, all of the modeling that they usually do, which is sort of this money ball science, they have it down to a science, all of that is out the window. They have no idea who's showing up. So I think there are going to be a lot of slots to fill over the course of the summer, which is you know, I, I don't mean to suggest the virus is a good thing for students. That would be awful. But um, I think for anyone on a wait list, hang in there. Um, I think anything is possible this summer. Uh, for, for students who are going to be submitting applications this fall, I would say stay the course. Keep prepping for those tests as if you were going to take them. I don't think we should assume that they're all just going to go out the window all at the same time at all the schools that you're interested in. So keep plugging away. Um, nobody has that crystal ball. Unfortunately, we wish we did. So we don't really know what the whole landscape is going to look like when you're applying this fall. Yeah. But I would stay the course. Stay the course. And if it turns out you don't need this or that test, fantastic. So much the better.